Hello everyone and welcome to episode 33 of the Real Draft series here on the channel using CWA as we are just two weeks away from our next pay-per-view. We have this TV then our Go Home Show TV as uh, the Edmonton's Epic Extravaganza Show. It is uh, so far it seems to be it's going to be quite the epic encounter fingers crossed as uh, we have uh, really for this TV we have a historic one. We have a big main event, and I, I mean that literally. We have a lot of people in this main event, as we'll get to. As, uh, yeah, you know, without uh, further ado, let's just run the show. Let's get right down into it. As uh, the pre-show, we have uh, a bit of a... Uh, we've had this before. It's back in January. We had a 3.0 TMDK matchup, as uh, we have it again here with Mikey Nichols, Scott Barker. Mikey Nichols getting the one with the shooting star press. Is, uh, Shane Ace and Mikey Nichols, 45, 46, 49 for Scott Parker, and 39 for Shane Matthews. As for the this match here, uh, this also happened, I believe, at a, in a pre-show. It might have actually been on the main show, but yeah, Sheamus and Wade Barrett taking on Violence Giants. Poor Violence Giants. I mean, 39s and 38s for him. It, it's tough. Anyway, Sheamus gets the bro kick in 10 8 getting the, the somewhat easy win in the pre-show. As uh, for the main show, now we obviously get the Stampede TV intro as always. So then, Bret Hart, he opens up the show from his office, saying tonight we will see history being made here in the Stampede TV sh uh, studios here. As it is going to be for the first time ever, a 10-man tag in our main event. It's going to be the team of Brian Danielson, Sami Zayn, Kevin Steen, and the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, taking on Blood Generation, of Pack. Shima, Nuriki Doi, John Morrison, and The Miz. What a fucking jam-packed 10-man tag that is going to be. Uh, yeah, I just see, I love that kind of idea of a babyface and heel team. Squaring off now, I mean, we have a, you know, we, the history, the, the stories are being told here. We got the, the pack, Brian Danielson, Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn, they kind of been like the babyface kind of alliance between both uh, the Young Bucks and, uh, you know, the Young Bucks with Miz and Morrison, but they also, they've had their history, too. Uh, you know, Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn, and the Young Bucks, but obviously the, the Kevin Steen friendship with Matt and Nick Jackson, uh, you know, with Mount Rushmore and whatnot. And so, yeah, just there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle there. Obviously, Miz and Brian Danielson, they have their history, uh, which hasn't really been showcased here at the CWA, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, just a, lot of, a lot of moving pieces going on. I got a 58. I was hoping I'd do a little bit better, but that's all right. As the opener is just a, a squash, basi basically, of Natty and uh, Kylie Ray. So Natty gets the win in 534 with a German suplex. Yeah, 53 at yeah, Kylie Ray. God bless her. A, a sweetheart of a person. But just, didn't, just for us here in this mod, it ain't going. Yeah, that's a 24. Oof. As uh, this, the backstage promo with Paige, as uh, you just a kind of cryptic message for the women's division saying that there is a storm coming that it will wipe out and plunge that women's division and cleanse it of its sins and of its dastardly deeds and everyone should be ready for the storm that's coming to the cwa just you know a simple two three minute promo just simple as that nothing too crazy but yeah Paige did a great job there with a 58 and she improved uh as did a massive job of improvising interactions with the crowd. It's at 50 here, so yeah, this match. I feel like I have to explain myself. Takashi Sujor has not been booked since May. It's July uh, here in this mod. Two months of him not being booked. Had to book him. Figured, why not just give Phoenix someone to beat? Here we are. As uh, they didn't click. Yeah, Takashi Sujor with a 27. Poor Takashi Sujor. Just, uh, TW is very, uh, rough on, uh, not only for our product, because he's not really over, uh, in Canada, but, uh, just, usually age-wise, because this was a way back when, back in May, uh, Nathan just kind of converted his mod that he's doing in 2016 over to here. Obviously, uh, that type of conversion, not, doesn't do great, because there's a lot of different things you kind of have to put on people as far as the, uh, yeah, like the ageless factor and whatnot, and he probably didn't do that, and it's just a, a whole thing. Nonetheless, though, it's still, with the pop ring, it wasn't going to be anywhere near, like, a 30 or anything. So, yeah, just Ray Phoenix with an easy kind of win. In, in 10 minutes, though, over to Kaji Zujua, 
1004. What a odd, odd matchup. But afterwards, Hiromu Takahashi and I did not play Ray Phoenix, I put Renee Young. How fun. As I just... The amount of times I fuck shit up in this series is hilarious. As, uh, yeah, Hiromu attacks Ray Phoenix from behind post-match. Don't mind it, it was Renee Young. So after that, we have a uh, location unknown promo as... Uh, the, the cult leader, uh, air cults, is that a cult, as they would say, as the the father of the Dark Order, Father James Mitchell, says that Brody Lee, you will get your fans on Brock Lesnar, you will get to face my Deacon of Destruction, but on Brock Lesnar's time, not your time, Brody Lee, big rig, you better be ready, because Brock Lesnar, you have pissed off the wrong man, Brody Lee, you've pissed off the wrong man. As Brock Lesnar now, you seen just a normal angry Brock Lesnar, but now just a pissed off with a vengeance and a vendetta against you. Brody Lee, you are a marked man. Watch yourself. As Father James Central just gives a warning to Brody Lee about a, his deacon of destruction, Brock Lesnar. As then we go on to the actual main event, this 10-man tag. We're all over the place here, so obviously right out of the gate, uh, it's su surprising that Pac actually had a better performance than Brian Danielson did. That was huge. Great job by Pac. As uh, the 74, 72 from Brian. Looks like 65 is the next one, so that's Nick. Jackson, Ken Steen, 64, 61, Sammy Zayn. And then both 58s from uh, Matt Jackson and Miz. Uh, John Morrison knows the office game. He got a 53. Obviously, he'd been about the same range as Miz. And then Naruki doing Shima being obviously probably the lesser of the pop, uh, pop between everybody here. As uh, the the magic is um, Blood Generation and the Miz and Morrison team, the heel team, get the win over the babyfaces when John Morrison pinned Mad Jax with a starship pain thanks to the distraction and interference from Taya and Maurice there. As just uh, Maurice distracting, Taya comes in, takes out Matt, sets up the starship pain for, for John, and then... So we have the challengers beating the champions here in a 10-man tag just to kind of give them some heat and some momentum going into their title matchup. So yeah, there are a lot of green, though. A lot of green. Nick Jackson been up in the round with a hot new move. Figured, like, I feel like this is going to go okay ratings-wise. A 61. All right, it didn't do okay. We lost more than we gained. Uh, we could have gained more in British uh, regions and Oceania regions, but due to our contract, it is what it is. I was hoping he would at least get a 70, but I, I figured Shima and uh, Nariki Dora have kind of capped that at being at 65. So we get a 66 out of it. Could have been a lot worse. But yeah, I mean, you know, could have been could have been a lot worse. That was a fun 10-man tag, though. That was a fun, fun main event to get all the big stars in there. As uh, that will do it for this episode of the Real World Draft Series of the CWA. Thank you all, as I hope everyone... Has a happy holidays. I know with 2020 has been a real shit of a year with COVID and whatnot. So hopefully if you can do spend your time with your families, loved ones, hopefully you can enjoy the, those times as uh, with each other. Some warm embrace as, you know, it just, what a shit year it's been. Hopefully, you know, finger, it can, we can only go up from here is what it, you try to tell yourself and you try to hype yourself to be. But uh, I it would definitely be the worst if it was even worse uh next year in 2021 hopefully the the worst is behind us and we're moving forward into the new year with uh hopefully you know if, if you're somewhere safe from the COVID-19 uh you know mask up do your thing you know wash your goddamn hands everyone you know we've all we've been through this this has been an ordeal if you don't know I'm now Jesus Christ uh hopefully you've been in a coma and has missed out on this horrible year. Thank you all again, as I hope you all have a happy holidays. Take care, everyone.